We started noticing things get in the way once the engine was in the inside the bay. We got the vacuum actuator that hangs out over here. Then we have the original throttle body with a throttle cable stay, which kind of hangs out over here. And we do want to get a hood in the car. And so our clearance doesn't look like very good at all for what we're trying to achieve here. And begin, and also we're trying to make this budget. So instead of getting like an RBC intake manifold or some aftermarket manifold, we were just gonna try to use what we already had um, laying around. So we thought, hey, you know what? Maybe we could just unbolt this guy, you know, because these intake manifolds are two pieces. So the composite part could come off and we thought maybe an Accord or a TSX would bolt directly on. Well, we were saddened when we found out that when we took, took that one apart and tried to made it up to the uh, injector plenum section on our RSX, you, could, you can almost see like how it's not even the same at all. And so it wasn't a direct bolt on. And then we thought maybe we could swap throttle bodies from the, um, the Accord also, which which um, the throttle cable actually is on the inside versus the outside of the RSX, and that will give us some clearance also. So if we put it up towards here, you can kind of see how that would work. And that will give us plenty of room, but guess what? The bolt pattern isn't the same either. So it looks like we're stuck with using the original intake manifold and the idea that this is still gonna be budget, and so that means we're just gonna go ahead and use what we have. So what we're gonna do, uh, what we have done is kind of uh, dissected this to see how it comes apart and how, how it works and like we were explaining we have the long runners that run along the outside of the intake manifold and then we have a short bypass and so what that's going to do is allow air run to travel travel the, the furthest distance or the shortest distance well this is a drag car and we're gonna go with the shortest distance so when disassembling this we saw which which direction that this piece needs to be need to be spun to get us the short side and we clocked it the way that we need it, which is pointing down, we're ready to rock and roll. So most of the intake manifolds on the K-Series motors have this little thing right here. Uh, usually there's a, another uh, nipple that sticks off this way, goes over to the intake air tube. This is called an air assist valve. This is a pollution control device. It actually creates a little bit of vacuum around the injectors so that until the engine's warmed up, uh, the seals and injectors will leak a little bit of vapor, and that's what it's uh, meant to do. Uh, oftentimes, though, uh, like drag applications, other off-road applications, that's just really not necessary to have that. So uh, if you look over here at this uh, one, you can see the hole where the air assist valve is right up here on top of this radiator hose, uh, upper radiator hose fitting. So that just happens to be a really convenient place to put your water temp sensor. On an RSX or any other K-series powered car, normally the ECU tells the dash what the water temp is. On these older style cars, you actually need a sensor to send that information. It's a little single wire sensor. It's a little bit small to go in that hole, so we use an adapter. This is a, I believe it's 3 8 inch uh, uh, pipe thread, and on the other end is quarter inch pipe thread. And Although it's not perfect, because this is actually British pipe thread, it's actually good enough. Put a little bit of uh, Honda Bond or Ultra Flange on that and screw it down tight and it seals up really nicely. So this adapter pops right in the top there with your sensor. Then you just need to run one wire to your dash and you get an accurate reading for your water temp sensor. The next uh, piece of the puzzle here was the throttle cable. We tried a CRV one, it didn't work out very well. Uh, Emiliano, uh, who's uh, operating the light today, uh, actually was able to get one off an RSX Type S and it seems to work perfectly. Uh, it's a little bit long, so we've routed it out of the firewall, behind the engine, across in front of the fuel rail, and then looped it back, uh, kind of the same way they do it uh, on the stock car. Uh, the only thing that I'm having a little bit of difficulty with is this bracket right here sits up kind of high. I think it's going to interfere with the hood. Uh, you can see it's up there a little bit. So I'm going to perform a little surgery on it and chop it up a little bit and move this area down to right about here. Uh, the cable should still work the same way. 
and uh, it should be uh, nice and uh, compact that way. Uh, then the only thing I think it's going to be in way is this purge valve. So we may wind up changing that as well at some point. We could actually take the purge valve and move it back to here, maybe get an Accord style one. Um, or since this is uh, not going to be a street loop car, we could just eliminate the purge valve totally. So we have a purge solenoid that sits on top of the intake manifold here. We actually broke it off. And most of the... Um, <coughs> like we're right in the middle of... I'm sorry. <laughs> What Robert and um, Brian made up here was a, a delete, a delete valve. Don't ask me. I know everything. <laughs> On top of the throttle body, there is um, a purge solenoid. I actually broke the nipple off of it, uh, trying to pull a vacuum hose on it. Matter of fact, a lot of the throttle bodies off the engines that we tried to find another one were broken too. Like because of the like most of them are front end collisions, so the throttle cables were all broken. Um, along with that. So we tried to find another one, we weren't able to locate one, so since this doesn't really matter as far as emissions go in this car, since it's going to be a drag car, Brian made up an adapter which then blocks it off. Okay, so we ended up finding a, a vacuum hose that we turned upside down. We just literally just kind of shoved it in there, all right, like that. But to make sure that it stays in there, we're going to put this bracket over the top of it and it screws down just like the original purge solenoid did. This was made out of um, just like aluminum plate. Brian literally eyeballed it. He just kind of looked, guessed, and it really it worked really well. So, what this is going to do is make sure that vacuum cap stays down. This is the K series alternator. It typically mounts on the engine, kind of up a little bit high, and uh, it interferes with the headlamp bucket on the CRX. Way back in the day when we did the first swap in the CRX. We noticed that was a problem, so what we did is we took this alternator and mounted it down below. There was an existing bolt hole we were able to use and mounted it down there. One of the problems we found, though, was it offset this pulley a little bit. Now, we were able to get it on there, but we had to use a slightly thinner uh, pulley and a different belt, but we were able to do it. Right now, K-Tuned actually makes a kit that solves all the problems. This little kit comes with everything. It comes with a new alternator pulley that's a little bit offset. You can see it's moved out a little bit. It comes with this tensioner that bolts on the front of the block where the old alternator used to go. It has a belt that's sized properly as long as you tell them what engine you have. And it comes with all the necessary mounting hardware as well as a couple of new brackets to mount the alternator down below. And what's going to happen is it's going to go down where the AC compressor used to be. So that means there's no longer going to be air conditioning. But this will now be out of the way of the headlamp bucket, will be nice and low on the engine, and we're now going to have a shorter belt as well with a manual tensioner rather than the spring tensioner. All in all, it's a really nice product. Let's get it on the car. Let's see what they say goes first. Okay, at least it's at a fifth grade read level. Ah, here we go. See this right here? Yeah. There's actually two different types of... Spacer. Uh, well, there's two different types of water pump. One of them requires a spacer, the other one doesn't. So there's the Accord style one, and then there is the uh, uh, K20, like uh, RSX and... Uh, uh, RSX and CRV uh, compressor. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. So there's the hardware for that. So let's start off by installing this right here. Go ahead and open that stuff up. We've got a, a K24 out of a TSX motor, so we're gonna actually need that spacer, but we need a slightly longer bolt. Now we can see the bottom bolt just nice and flush. Is that the small one? Not that I need it right now. So down here was where the stock AC compressor normally bolted. There was a bracket there, aluminum, cast aluminum, looked very similar to this. And the, uh, alt uh, the AC compressor bolt to it. We replaced it with the uh, K-Tune part. Looks like there are some aluminum spacers there. It looks yeah. like it's just to make up the difference. There are some aluminum spacers there to bring it out away from the oil pan and make it oh, yeah. bolt yeah, up properly. Looks like it still has that. That same curvature 
at the OEM cast part. Yeah. yeah. yeah Notice how this angle and this angle is oh, going to be yeah. the same. Yeah. Before we bolt the alternator on, we're going to go ahead and uh, swap out this pulley real, real quick. But. Not reverse thread. Now k makes a really nice super wide pulley and belt to go with it. Uh, one of the things about that though is it doesn't fit all alternators equally. Uh, the one out of the TSX has a nice big opening here. Some of the other ones it actually requires you to do some modification to the body of the alternator. It's saw in time. We actually had one of these so we decided to cheap out and take the easy way on this. Uh, Basically, the way you can tell them apart, by the way, without disassembling them, if you're just seeing a pile of them, is it uses a 22 millimeter nut instead of a 24 millimeter nut. So, see how this base is kind of wide? It needs a nice wide opening there. Slides right on. It's not keyed at all. The key is to torque it down to the right foot pounds. Me, I just hammered on with one of these. Good enough. Ready to go. So the um, k tune kit comes with an assortment of bolts and spacers depending on the um, alternator that you're going to be using. Uh, this particular one uses this spacer. It's going to try and needs to the alternator to clear this hook right here and uh, this, the factory bolts. So we're going to start with that one because that's going to kind of hang it all in place and make it easier for me to get to the bottom bolts and put those on. Those are going to be a bit more of a chore. One of the reasons they come with so many spacers is there's different offsets for these two mounting tabs on the alternator. Uh, the uh, water pumps are, uh, are physically different on the RSX and the Accord. So where that is uh, evident is uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the spacing on the back side of the alternator. Thread it in. Last but not least, it comes with this cool K-tuned belt, specifically made for this application. Uh, typically, you don't find belts this short with this many ribs. It has to be custom made. The reason you don't find belts this short with this many ribs is the shorter the belt, the less width it needs. But in order for it to look good, fit well, use all the ribs so it's not jumping around, K-tune went ahead and had this custom belt made for this application. K24s have a different size pulley than K20s do, so you need to make sure you get the correct one for your particular application. I'm sure if you change pulleys later on down the road or engines, you can buy another one from K-Tuned as well. All right. Hey Robert, how? tell me how to tighten the belt. Show me what goes on here. All right, check this, guy, check this out. Now that we got the belt on, we got this cool little deal here. It actually looks really cool. I like that it's, that it's knurled here so you can turn it. So. This right here actually is what applies tension on the belt. What this does is it starts the pulley as it gets into position. It bottoms itself out inside the bracket that attaches the pulley to the bracket. Then this guy right here, we turn it and that's actually what applies tension to the belt. Okay. That's about right. Okay, so uh, you have an interesting way of uh, tightening it. Normally I'm used to measuring some sort of deflection on the belt uh, in order to get it properly tightened. I would imagine with uh, seven ribs though, it's actually going to have pretty good traction even if it's a little bit looser. Uh, by the way, the way k describes that you tighten the belt is once you get it tightened, and you can actually finger tighten it, you should be able to turn this belt right here to 90 degrees. If you can't turn it 90 degrees easily, you've got the belt too tight. Right there I'd say that's fairly easy to do. Let's tighten up the bolt and see if it stays that way. There we go, ready to go. So we ran into a little bit of a problem here. This is our alternator we decided to use. This is the TSX style one. Notice how the plug sits on the front side. 
on some of the other alternators, the plug is poking out this way. Now, what's wind up being a problem is when we put our radiator in, it actually interferes. And this is our fancy tuck radiator yeah. that we're really proud of how it fit. And uh, we were just getting ready to put the intake manifold. Actually, we we're going to put this in there to start making our hoses with the intake manifold off so we can work around. I go to drop it in there. And if you come on top here to see, as I go to drop it down, you can see right where that it's plug interferes. You can right. see right here, it's sitting. Yeah, it's sitting right on top. On of the that. plug. So, the solution is to get one of the alternators that has the plug in a different location to machine out the uh, uh, housing in order to accept our pulley and then uh, put that alternator in and uh, it should clear our radiator. Damn it. So uh, we've had a bit of a, an odyssey here uh, with the alternator. Uh, we started off with the alternator out of a uh, TSX uh, the problem was with our full width radiator, this plug, which pointed forward, actually interfered with the radiator. So that wasn't going to work. Now, uh, remember, we're using an alternator relocation kit, and actually it's called an AC uh, power steering delete kit, which relocates the alter alternator down low on the engine. Uh, we wanted it to get the alternator out of the headlamp on the CRX. So again, first we tried a TSX one. Because the plug faced forward, it was going to interfere with our full width radiator. If you had a half width, it wouldn't be a problem, but it interfered with our full width radiator. So we happened to have on one of the other cars another one where the plug uh, pointed down. So it was tucked out of the way a lot better, and it worked out. Uh, initially, when we put the, uh, pulled the, uh, the pulley off, there was this large rib that sat here that didn't allow us to put the K-tuned alternator pulley on, so we weren't be able to, going to be able to get the full seven ribs. So what I did was I took this apart, cut the rib off, then turned around and machined the opening a little bit bigger because that also needed to happen. But as I was doing that, I was comparing the pulleys and I noticed that if it was seated all the way, as you can see right here, the pulley should actually be one rib off, and they're not. They're like one and a quarter ribs off. So that was actually going to put our belt kind of not properly aligned, which was going to cause premature wear, a lot of heat in the belt. That was going to be a problem. So I did some measuring on the two pulleys, determined I could cut about, I forget what it was, like uh, 80 thou off the thing, and that would then allow to do it. But then when I did that, the nut wouldn't seat all the way, so I was going to have to cut a spacer on the other side. And I'm thinking to myself, K-tuned, what the heck are you doing? Well, the problem isn't K-tuned. The problem is the alternator. This alternator doesn't come on a lot of cars. It's actually kind of a rare one. This is the proper alternator right here. This particular alternator comes off the RSX Type S. It has the plug sticking out this way, so it's not going to interfere with our radiator. And if you look at its pulley, it's exactly one rib off, which is what we need. Now, what will happen is if you're doing this swap, this uh, is going to work with any of the Nippendenzo alternators. If you use the Mitsuba alternator, uh, I'm sorry, Mitsubishi alternator, it's not going to work. That one has a slightly different offset, so you'd wind up having to make some spacers, doing some trimming, stuff like that. But as long as you have a Nippendenzo one, it's going to work. And you can tell the Nippendenzo ones because they have a sh dust shield on the back of them. This is the one from the RSX. This is the one from the uh, Accord and TSX. And this one, no dust shield. This one is a Mitsubishi. Anyway, I'm happy to say we've got the right alternator. We can now install it. Just going to zip this on with the impact. Get it good and tight. Good and tight. That's that's German, right? Look, good and tight, and it spins. Check that out. So I'm putting this on. Put the lower bolts in first, and then the top. That way, it's not fighting you. I didn't come up with that. That wasn't my idea. That was good old Brian. You know, if he if he wasn't here, I don't know what we'd be doing. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> 
looking. We got an alternator that fits. We got a pulley that lines up. We got a plug that points the right direction. And our power still reaches. We're ready to rock and roll.